That way, look, my infant, lo, what a pretty baby show. See the kitten on the wall, sporting with the leaves that fall. Withered leaves, one, two, and three, from the lofty elder tree. Through the calm and frosty air of this morning bright and fair, eddying round and round they sink, softly, slowly one might think. From the motions that are made, every little leaf conveyed, sylph or fairy, hither tending, to this lower world descending, each invisible and mute in his wavering parachute. But the kitten, how she starts, crouches, stretches, paws, and darts, first at one and then its fellow, just as light and just as yellow. There are many now, now one, now they stop, and there are none. What intenseness of desire in her upward eye of fire, with a tiger leap halfway, now she meets the coming prey, lets it go as fast and then has it in her power again, now she works with three or four, like an Indian conjurer, quick as he in feats of art, far beyond in joy of heart. Were her antics played in the eye of a thousand standers by, clapping hands with shout and stare, what would little Tabby care for the plaudits of the crowd? Over happy to be proud, over wealthy in the treasure of her own exceeding pleasure. Tis a pretty baby treat, nor I deem for me unmeet, here for neither babe nor me. Other playmate can I see of the countless living things that with stir of feet and wings in the sun of undershade upon bough or grassy blade, and with busy revelings, chirp and song and murmurings, made this orchard narrow space and this vale so blithe a place. Multitudes are swept away, never more to breathe the day. Some are sleeping, some in bands, traveled into distant lands. Others slunk to the moor and wood, far from human neighborhood. And among the kinds that keep with us close, Sir Fellowship. With us openly abide all have laid their mirth aside where is he that giddy sprite blue cap with his colors bright who was blessed as bird could be feeding in the apple tree made such wanton spoil and rout turning blossoms inside out hung head pointing towards the ground fluttered perched into a round bound himself and then unbound Lithest, gaudiest harlequin, prettiest tumbler ever seen, light of heart and light of limb, what is now become of him, lambs that through the mountains went, frisking, bleating merriment, when the year was in its prime, they are sobered by this time. If you look to vale or hill, if you listen, all is still, save a little neighboring rill, that from out the rocky ground strikes a solitary sound, vainly glittered hill and plain, and the air is calm in vain. Vainly morning spreads the lure of a sky serene and pure, creature none can she decoy into open sign of joy. Is it that they have a fear of the dreary season near, or that other pleasure be sweeter e'en than gaiety? Yet whate'er enjoyments dwell in the impenetrable cell of the silent heart which nature furnishes to every creature, whatsoever we feel and know to sedate for outward show, such a light of gladness breaks, pretty kitten from thy freaks, spreads with such a living grace o'er my little Dora's face. Yes, the sight, 
so stirs and charms the baby laughing in my arms that almost I could repine that your transports are not mine that I do not wholly fare even as ye do thoughtless pair and I will have my careless season spite of melancholy reason will walk through life in such a way that when time brings on decay now and then i may possess hours of perfect gladsomeness pleased by any random toy by a kitten's busy joy or an infant's laughing eye sharing in the ecstasy i would fare like that or this find my wisdom in my bliss keep the sprightly soul awake and have faculties to take even from things by sour sorrow wrought matter for a jocund thought spite of care and spite of grief to gamble with life's falling leaf